evening, all you wonderful people out here in Radio Land. It's Not Wednesday playing. night. It's 8 o'clock, and you know what that means. It's time for another wonderful, exciting episode of the NGSC West Recess. We here on the West, we are the most underrepresented of the lot, and that's what Josh and I are here for. We're here to fight that West Coast bias one show at a time. But that's not to say that we don't have fun also, because we have ourselves a great time while we do that. And I guess I should introduce myself properly while I'm sitting here talking to you all. I am Jerome Butler, a.k.a. Raider Rome, a.k.a. My Little Brother's Big Brother, a.k.a. Last King of Raider Nation. And Fighters West Coast Bias is never a one-man operation, so I'd like to introduce to you one man that I do trust in this operation. My co-host with the most, my brother of another color, my main man, Josh Matson. Good evening, Jerome. Looking forward to the show, and I'm doing really good. Uh, thanks for asking, and... Let's get this show on the road. Yeah, no doubt, man. Been a pretty interesting week in the world of the sports here on the West Coast. Uh, Josh, man, you get to check out the end of that Raider um, Bronco game? Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw a little bit of it, yes. <laughs> man, I tell you what, my heart was in my throat the whole fourth quarter of that game. I mean, I was sitting there trying to, like, mess around with P.D. Bronco like I always do. I mean, but that fourth quarter, I couldn't really even do that, man. Khalil Mack, dude, that guy, he's just one hell of a superstar in the making, ain't he? had an amazing game. He was unbelievably impressive in that game, and he was single-handedly probably one of the biggest reasons they won that game for sure. Yep. I mean, Denver's defense is very stingy. Derek Carr looked like, man, the first half, he just looked like a shell of himself. He made enough uh, plays in the second half, though, to keep the Raiders close. And I like the way they designed that last touchdown to take the lead over there with the uh, pass to Rivera on the fake bubble screen because Denver had been jumping it all day. So great coaching right there. And once again, Jack Del Rio and um, the um, offensive coordinator over there, Musgrave, makes a great um, adjustment. So you got to give it to him. Uh, the Raiders were impressive, and they made me happy because they uh, knocked off Denver, which only helps New England. So kudos to the Raiders for being – being my friend right now. <laughs> yeah, you stole my thunder there, Josh. I was just about to say, Patriot fans, you're welcome. <laughs> yes, sir. I'll take it, too, and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no problem here. We got Kurt here with us yet? I do not see, see him on the list, so. Uh, no. Okay, because tonight we're supposed to have Kurt along with um, Sandman as our guest for this evening. Well, sir, so. he is not here, so. Well, the Sandman's here. The sand yeah, man we still, here. We still got the sand man. So how you doing over there tonight, Sand? I'm doing great, Jerome. Uh, how are you doing tonight, Josh? How are you doing? It's great to be with the both of you. Looking forward to a wonderful show tonight. I am oh, it should be a great one, like always. Yeah, yeah, you usually are. You know, and, and commenting on that, that Raiders-Broncos game that you were just discussing, I think uh, the, the, the biggest flaw with the Denver Broncos was exposed in that football game. Uh, obviously, you know, arguably – the best defense in the NFL, they, you know, it's, they're right up there. Maybe maybe they're number two, maybe they're three, maybe they're one, but they're right there. But you see what happens to a Denver team when they make some mistakes in the second half and they just didn't have the offensive ability to overcome those mistakes, and then they drop a, a very big game at home, 15-12 to 12, to Oakland, and uh, obviously keeps Oakland's slim playoff hopes alive there. Well, you know, another thing, Sam, man, is Denver proved once again that they can't run the damn ball. And and that's a big reason why they can't win games too. And Brock Osweiler should not be throwing the ball 51 times in a game. Good point. I, I'm not. You know, he's, you got to treat him more like he's Trent Dilfer out there with this team. He needs to yeah. manage a football game and not make mistakes. And if you ask him to throw the ball 51 times, he's going to make a few mistakes. There's no doubt. I had no problem personally with Osweiler throwing the ball 51 times. I mean, it allowed that defensive line to keep pinning their ears back and going after him. And, hey, you cannot kick field goals in the first half of a football game and expect to win. So that's pretty much where I'm at with that. That's an excellent point there, Jerome. Uh, all those uh, opportunities in the red zone that they missed came back to haunt them in the end. Yeah, no doubt. But, hey, Ray Rome's not giving that win back. I mean, these guys have kicked our ass eight times in a row. So I didn't care how ugly it was. I'll take a 15-12 win over a 60-59 to loss any day. Raiders still alive for one more week anyway. And up here right, next in oh, – go ahead, Sandra. It's good for you to continue hope. I think uh, realistically as a Raiders fan, I think you know you're probably not going to make the playoffs, but uh, I would say they've made strides this year, and uh, next year's going to got to be about using some of that, that cap space money that they got to uh, bring in some more talent and uh, making some wise decisions in the draft. Yeah, no doubt. I'm really looking forward to it. For the first time in a long time, 
I could actually go into the end of a football season and say, hey, the Raiders are on to something, as opposed to in 2010 and 2011, even though they, these teams went 8-8, eight and eight, it did seem like there was a lot of uncertainty going into the future. But this, but this time around, you actually know what's about to take place with Oakland. Yeah, I, I happen to agree with that, yes. I mean, even with the little bumps in the road that cause having down the stretch here, uh, I think they, they, have the, they have the leader of their club, and he's got to continue to add pieces around them. Oh, yeah, no problem. The Raiders will start to do that. And in the AFC West, look out. They're a player, they're a player now. So that was our, pretty much our Raider report for this week. And, Josh, man, the last time we talked, we were thinking about Golden State possibly winning 33 in a row. Man, no such luck. They go into Milwaukee, and after winning 28 games in a row, they finally catch a beat down by the Bucks. And Milwaukee has now ended two of the longest winning streaks in NBA history at 28 and 33 games by the Los Angeles Lakers. So, the Midwest, they can't play basketball very well, but they can end some streaks. So, talk to us about Golden State streak. And- I was shocked. I mean, Minnesota? <laughs> uh, uh, Milwaukee. I mean, not Min- Milwaukee, my bad, sorry. Uh, Milwaukee being the team to end the streak was pretty shocking, if you ask me. Um, but it was bound to happen. I mean, of, of course, Golden State was not going to go undefeated this year. I mean, the, that's impossible. There's no way that was going to happen. So, I mean, they're going to get back on track. They're going to start. They'll they'll win a bunch of games in a row again. Uh, I just, it's just a streak that ended, and they'll create a new streak, is my opinion. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Before we get to Sad Man, though, I was just thinking about something really, really weird here. The Golden State oh, Warriors are 24 and one. Well, on the other end of the spectrum, the Philadelphia 76ers are currently 1-24. and 24. Pretty weird symmetry in the NBA, huh? Well, Philadelphia sucks, so <laughs> there's no shock there, man. Yeah, they did add Jerry Colangelo to try to speed up their tanking, I mean, um, rebuilding project. So we'll see how that goes in the future there. You got anything you want to add about Golden State here, Sam? Um, just that I actually wasn't shocked they lost to Milwaukee. Uh being the night before they, they played that game in Boston that I believe what, it was two overtimes that game or three? Uh, that was two overtimes, yeah. But that was a long, hard game they played. They had to really fight to get past that game. And then you're talking about Thompson being hurt uh, and then having to go back and play Milwaukee the next night. I actually kind of thought they were ripe to lose that game. And the, here's the ironic part. Who, who, did the, who did the Milwaukee Bucks just lose to? <laughs> the Lakers. <laughs> yeah, crazy. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> The yeah, NBA you know, is a wild world, know. I tell you. But they play the games, as they say. Yeah, no doubt. Man. Okay, so before we move on from this, here's my next question. Does Golden State win 73 basketball games this season? You first, Josh. Do they win 73 games? Let's see. Um, uh, I'm going to say no because that's, just, that's a lot of wins. And the odds are better in my favor to say no than to say yes, I would say. <laughs> Okay, and here's your and question two for you, Josh. Do the Philadelphia right. 76ers lose 70 games this season? Oh, um, that's actually possible, yeah. I, I would say yes. Yeah, those guys are terrible. All right, Sam, man. Golden State win 73 this year? You know, we, we discussed this, if you remember, a few weeks back, and I, I had predicted Golden State to win 70 games uh, because I thought they'd come really close to uh, setting this record. You know, they may do it. Uh, it's pretty crazy, but they might, they might be able to do it. I might have to say that I think it's a 50-50 shot now that I think they can actually accomplish that feat. So it's, it's really hard. Like Josh said, you know what, you, 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 you say you bet against it, but I think it's really, really a 50-50 proposition now. And I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and say that these things can happen from time to time in sports. I'm going to say the Golden State Warriors win 73 games. Okay. I think we got ourselves our um, our next guest here, Kurt Nelson, on with us. You here with us now, Kurt? Mm, no one okay. else has logged on yet there, Jerome. I'll oh. let you know when somebody does. <laughs> okay. Hold on here. He told me he had the wrong PIN number. So uh, I'll, help, I'll help Kurt out here. And before we move on here, Sad, does Golden State lose 70, 70 games? I mean, does Philadelphia lose 70 games? Yes, they do. I, I, I'm hands down and they have some good young big men, but the team's a disaster. Uh, they, they're going to lose those 70 games. I, I just, look, I can, I can see them losing 73. <laughs> well, yeah, they would. If they hit 73, that would definitely tie their record for futility because they actually lost 73 games back in more NBA Cemetery, 1973. <laughs> well, Pretty wild, huh? Good... Uh, then the question is, why is Philadelphia really so bad? And, and I'm not a 
Philly fan, so maybe um, you know Jerome has an answer to that. But that team has been awful for a while, and they've done a lot of trading away players. They're high, all their high draft picks, they basically traded away, away last year. So I don't know what that team is trying to do, but I don't know. Uh, any opinions on the matter? <laughs> yeah, I'll, no, try. I'll, I'll fill this one here first. It looks like Philadelphia here, they're, they're attempting to try a model. Because like the last five to six seasons, Philadelphia was like a mediocre kind of basketball team. They were finished at the seven or eight seed and never really have a chance at the title. So they decided to try a different kind of model here where they would lose tons and tons of basketball games, get, get high draft picks, and continue to and try to build highly through the draft. The only problem with the way that they're doing this, this is there are, there's actually no veterans on the team for a locker room experience to actually help the young kids go through what they're going through. And what we're seeing here with that is the kids aren't really building. Your, your guys that you're drafting are getting hurt. You've got one guy that's not even in the United States yet. And, it just, and it's just making for horrible, horrible basketball. Instead of you rebuilding, people are laughing at you and making you look and thinking you're a damn joke. So that's pretty much why Philadelphia's uh, rebuilding slash tanking project isn't going so well. What do you think, Sam? Man? I think you, first of all, I think you make an excellent point in regards to them having no veterans on the team. You, you, you know, basketball is not, is, even though you can say it's a young man's sport, you need leadership and the basketball to learn your way. You're going to need a couple of guys on the team who have been through the, uh, the wars. They lack that. There's no doubt. Um, they have some good young talent up front. It's very obvious that they do with Knowles and, and Okafor and hopefully Embiid coming back. But they have no backcourt. How are you supposed to win basketball games if you can't distribute the ball? How are you supposed to win basketball games if you can't guard another, uh, another team's point guard? You're not going to win that way. We all know that's a formula in the NBA. And they don't have it. They lack it. They're the worst at it in the NBA. And that uh, pretty much is the reason why that their record is what it is. Great point there, Sam. These guys are a damn joke. I tell you that much here. <laughs> and I think we finally did get Kurt in here with us now. How you doing over there, Kurt? Uh, doing well tonight, Jerome. All right, man. It's good to have you. I know we got off to a bit of a slow start here. here you want to weigh in on this NBA discussion that we're having real quick here? Boy, I tell you, I really cannot add much to you uh, in regards to NBA. <laughs> okay, no problem here. I uh, was just pretty much wondering, do you think the Golden State could win 73 basketball games this season? You know, they were talking about that the other day and breaking it down. It wasn't unrealistic. They had to go like 48 and 10 or, you know, thereabouts just to tie it. I don't follow it enough, um, but it's interesting. I, I When they break the numbers down, it sounds like they can do it. Well, I'm going to sit there and hope that they can because the Lakers are going nowhere. They're actually shooting themselves in the ass by winning basketball games. Well, that's another story for a different day there. And I guess we should go ahead and get into some football. I know that's what we're all waiting on here. So I guess we should go ahead and start here. The first panel question I have here, we'll start with you, Kurt. Who wins the NFC East this year? Oh, boy. Well, I tell you, probably Philly, you know, Um and it's hard to pick somebody. I mean, Dallas is out. I don't care, you know, what, what Jerry Jones thinks. Um, and the Giants, God bless them. Um, I think Tom Coughlin, you know, Rivera probably went coach of the year um, in the NFC. But Tom Coughlin's doing a ton with very little there with the Giants. You know, and their Bible, I just, I just think the Giants have a tough road to go here. And I think Philly's going to squeak it on out. That's a pretty interesting take there. I do think the Eagles are starting to play um, good basketball at the right time, so hopefully they can. So hopefully they can get together and get that done there. I, I just said basketball. Oh, damn. All right. Yeah, Josh. I'm still thinking about the 76ers, man. I ain't had. I, I ain't had breakfast. Leave me alone, huh? All right. Man. All, right. All right. But I, I guess since you're messing with me, Josh, who do you have one in the NFC East? Okay. Uh, this is actually this is definitely a tough one, but. I would have to lean towards the Eagles right now. I, I, I think they're uh, – look, they beat my team, New England, which is supposed to be one of the best teams in the NFL. And granted, New England had a lot of injuries going into that game, but the Eagles got got it done. And and I think they're playing a little bit better lately. So I'm buying. I'm buying the Eagles. Okay, that's two for two here. So I guess we should go now to our resident NFC East fan actually here. I know Dallas is 4-9, and nine and it's kind of tough. So, Sam, man, I'm going to give you a two-parter here. Do you think Dallas could still win this division? And if not, who does win it? 
Uh, first off, no, I do not think Dallas can still win this division. Uh, you, you've watched enough of Matt Castle to understand that that's, he's just not capable of leading this team to uh, – 